Ascension Team by Alice B. Claggett. Dear ones, here are images of my Ascension Team. As you may know, the human form is specially created so that it can channel star intel for sentient beings of many dimensions. In the arisen human, there are 12 chakras that can channel 12 dimensions of messages by very diverse star races. At the bottom right hand side of this image, for instance, is a black Maldikian Bigfoot with red eyes. This being exists in the second and third dimensions. We human beings can channel messages from the Maldikian Bigfoot through our second and third chakras. At the level of my heart is a yellow baptismal self, which exists in the fourth and fifth dimensions. We humans can channel messages from our baptismal selves through our fourth and fifth chakras. At the top of the image, above my head are two beings from the Lyran Collective, who exist in the twelfth dimension. We humans can channel messages from our Ascension Team members in the Lyran Collective through our twelfth chakra, which is the highest of the formed, as opposed to formless, dimensions. As you may know, we humans have four minds, the unconscious, subconscious, conscious, and superconscious mind. Each of our minds has under its care certain of our chakras, which are the energetic tools we light workers use to channel star messages. The unconscious mind has under its care the subpersonal chakras. I feel that these exist below the range of channeling for me. I find them too dense, too difficult to penetrate. Setting the unconscious mind aside, we humans can channel messages from our other three minds. Our subconscious mind has in its care personal chakras 1, 2 and 3. Through these we can channel messages from star beings that exist in the first through the third dimensions. Our conscious mind has in its care personal chakras 4 through 7. Through these we can channel messages from star beings that exist in the fourth through the seventh dimensions. Our superconscious mind has in its care personal chakras 8 through 12 which are also known as transpersonal chakras 1 through 5. Through these we can channel messages from star beings that exist in the 8th through the 12th dimensions. And that is the end of the formed dimensions. Beyond that are the 13th through the 72nd dimensions, through which the angelic realm wields the vast powers delegated to it by God for the upkeep of the universe. Let us set these realms aside as they are far beyond our ken. Then what is left for us light workers to channel? Within our auspice are the twelve dimensions mentioned above. Which of our star brothers and sisters is hoping to speak with us? What is its dimensional frequency? Which of our human minds, subconscious, conscious, or superconscious, would be best suited to convey the message? You can imagine that the messages conveyed will be very different, depending on which of our human minds convey them. The rule for light workers is, expect the unexpected. Go with the flow. Remain neutral, like Mr. Spock of Star Trek. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at the members of my Ascension team. Maldikian Bigfoot, Second and Third Dimensions here is my Maldikian Bigfoot Ascension team member. My Bigfoot likes dark corners and is shy of human beings. It was I who sighted him in a dark corner of my meditation room, and again by my fireplace one evening some while later. In the Law of One, the raw material they say that some of the sorts of beings we call Bigfoot are beings from planet Maldik. After the destruction of Maldik, through, it is said, Misuse of advanced technology, the material of the planet became the asteroid belt of our solar system. According to the Law of One, the people of Maldik, the Maldikians, were so traumatized by the destruction of their planet that their spirits hunkered together in a great knot of anguish. Eons went by. And now finally, today, some of the Maldikians have chosen to be in form once more this time on their neighboring planet Earth. The being I saw some years ago in my meditation room, 
and later by my fireplace, was, I feel, one of the returning Maldikians. Nature Spirits, Brownies, Fourth Dimension, Astral Plane. Nature Spirits of many kinds, Fairies and Elves, Brownies and Gnomes, and many others, are members of my Ascension Team. Can you see three of the nature spirits known as brownies in this image? The first, at the bottom of the image, is doing a handstand in front of the second, which is taller. The third is a tall brownie chieftain. The photo was from a composite image of wild fennel stalks in Southern California. The elder race, Martian bacterial colonist of Earth, third dimension, bacterial form, fourth dimension, spirit of their beingness. The Martian bacterial colonists of the human colon are respected members of my ascension team. These are members of the elder race who have chosen to live commensally with human beings such as I. To my human form these Martians, known somewhat derogatorily to scientists of today as bacteria, lend their advanced bioengineering skills. It was their expertise that helped my immune system to speedily overcome the invasion of COVID-19 in early 2020, for example, by buffing up my T-cells, as it seemed to me at the time. There are other Martian bacterial colonists here on Earth that do not shelter in the colons of mammals such as I. These are known, amongst the elder race, as the Ancient Ones. They are quite similar to the first Martians who traveled through space to Earth on meteorites about 4 billion years ago. This drawing of one of the ancient ones that you see before you is figurative, rather than being a physical likeness. But according to the amazing Martian oral tradition, which spans billions of years on Earth alone, this drawing is close to a factual understanding. The Martians remember being bipedal sentient beings on Mars, who through their advanced bioengineering techniques were able to micromanaturize and encapsulate their people to prevent annihilation when their home planet was stripped of its atmosphere. Thus the image of an astronaut within the image of a freewheeling ancient one of Earth today seems especially apt to me. Malween, Fourth and Fifth Dimensions my Ascension team member Malween was gifted to me by Malwe the Andromedan. Malween is an astral trilobite that forms an energetic suit of armor at my navel point through access to fifth dimensional energy. Speaking from my own clear experience, I can say that, in times when we are faced with life-threatening danger, from the center of the symbolic heart I depicted on the back of this wonderful being can come a brilliant ray of light aimed at an evil astral attacker, such as a devil, a demon, or an astral thuggy. That laser-like stun beam, in my instance, startled that being into letting go of me, so that I could escape his clutches. A word to the wise. In my case this very dark astral being was riding on the back of a human man who was an alternative health professional. Malween is our shield and our buckler, our armor of light against the armies of the dark. Thank heaven for Malwe the Andromedan's wondrous gift to humankind. Sekhmet aspect of the Hathors of Venus, 4th to 6th dimensions, mostly 6D. From planet Venus through Earth's solar astral planes, flows the energy and the wise guidance of the members of my ascension team who live on our neighboring planet. These are the energies of Sekhmet Hathor, depicted in this image, and the blue avian star beings depicted elsewhere. Known to ancient Egypt, Sekhmet Hathor offers two special qualities to her human charges, the courage of a lioness and the nurturing instincts of a mother. This composite image shows both qualities, that of the lioness, and that of a human mother. When a delegation of Hathors visited me during Solar Cycle 24, I felt both their deep wisdom and their joyfulness, their intention to cherish and uplift humankind, to lift us up to the pathways of light and love that course through our galaxy and on to all the other galaxies in our universe. Grounded Ascension Team Member, 
multi-dimensional, 1st through 12th dimension, mostly clearing from 4D to 5D. I, Alice B. Claggett, am the grounded member and channeler for my Ascension team. I am a human being with my feet here on the ground on planet Earth. I am here in human form so that I can channel the energies of my Ascension team to our beautiful planet, and to other beings here on Earth. As well, I can channel the energies of the peoples of Earth, of Earth herself, and of our Sun to my Ascension team, so that they will know what healing light ought to be sent so as to aid in the Ascension process. Baptismal Self of the Human Heart, 4th and 5th Dimensions this baptismal sylph was a member of my ascension team until, in the year 2011, it grew up and transformed into a wondrous angel. Here is the story. When a child is baptized, a sylph, a type of nature spirit known as an elemental of the air, attaches itself to the child, in the area of the child's heart, and in the form of a fiery, white astral cross. This astral cross protects the young child's heart from the darkness that is sometimes encountered, along with the light, here on earth. The image of the sylph that you see here is of its joyful, loving, fifth dimensional spirit of Christ consciousness. The astral cross mentioned in esoteric literature is the denser, fourth dimensional aspect of this angel egg, this baby angel. Under special conditions, the sylph can, all in a flash, be transformed to the kind of angel known as a seraph. This transformation is something that happened to my baptismal sylph on December 5, 2011, it is an experience that I will never forget. The vast display of Christ's dead love and light, as the sylph is transformed to an angelic presence in the heart of the devout Christian, is almost blinding, to the astral eye, in intensity the more so when hymns are played, and sung with devotion. There is nothing like devotional music, sung from the heart, to wake a beautiful, lovable little baptismal self and to offer that little being the divine spark that transforms it into a grown-up seraph. Pleiadian Star Being, 4th and 5th Dimensions This drawing of my Pleiadian Ascension team member is rendered rather similarly to drawings of Pleiadians online. It is based on my intuition rather than my channeling of our star brothers and sisters. It seems to me likely that the outpouring of creativity and star channeling through me, which began in the year 2000, had to do with my Pleiadian team member. Her gift from the stars came as a complete surprise and somewhat of a shock to me, as no doubt such gifts have come to many of my light worker brothers and sisters. Blue Avian Star Being of the Rock Collective, 4th to 6th Dimensions, mostly 6D. The turquoise color of this being represents the color of the feathers of Blue Avian Star Beings. These are ascensient, flight-enabled species of planet Venus. Once arboreal, they are now starborn and capable, like their kindred species Sekhmet Hath or of the Rock Collective, of intersolar system travel. I first encountered blue avian star beings through a light worker and channeler in New Zealand, who was on a live interview that I saw online in May 2021. Soon thereafter, I was amazed to discover that I have such an Ascension team member as well, and that it is looking after the songbirds that provide such comfort to me through their presence and their melodious voices in my backyard. My Blue Avian Star Being Ascension team member reminds me every day that joy can be found in simple things. It lifts me from despair at the play of dark and light in this earthly reality, to an understanding that all is well. Alpha Centaurian, Insectian Star Race, 1st through 6th Dimensions Alpha Centauri is the nearest system of stars and exoplanets to our own solar system. Both Alpha Centauri and our solar system are members of the spiral Milky Way galaxy that we call home. Nevertheless, Alpha Centauri is more than 4 light years from our own solar system. 
It makes sense that intelligent life on Alpha Centauri is quite different in energy signature from that of humankind. The Alpha Centaurian member of my Ascension team is a member of the Insectian star races, maybe including the Andean star races, that act as Davis, a form of angel that cares for the natural world, to the insects of Earth. In their home world, there are Alpha Centaurians spanning the first through the sixth dimension. In the first dimension, they may engage in internecine and foreign warfare. In the second through the fourth dimension, I feel they may manifest as non Christed star beings that may be negative in aspect with regard to humankind, as they may engage in territorial aggression through takeover of land masses to feed their newborn the negative emotions of humans competing for territory with them. My Alpha Centaurian Ascension team member communicates with me through the sixth dimension. By very strong thought projection into my sixth chakra, my third eye point. Communication between us is rare, except when there is an issue of my being around many ants, or many other insects, especially social insects. At those times, I become acutely aware of the hierarchical and non individuated nature of the beings overlit by the Alpha Centaurian Devas. My mission on Earth from the stance of my Alpha Centauri and Ascension team member is that of seeing to a fair distribution of the resources of Earth to the many beings that inhabit our planet. Because of the differences between the Devas that overlight humankind and the Alpha Centauri and Devas of the insects, diplomacy is quite naturally of the utmost importance. In this regard I suggest that those of my light worker kin who establish telepathic contact with Alpha Centauri see to the elimination of insects from their homes. That will diminish the strength of telepathic contact by the Alpha Centauri and Star Race Davis. I further suggest we light workers develop, as best we can, the quality of neutral mind, in the Zen way. We might look to the Star Trek character Mr. Spock for pointers in this regard. I cannot overemphasize the importance of neutral mind in first contact with our star brothers and sisters, especially with regard to contact with the many non-Christed star races, such as those of Alpha Centauri. Syrian star being, 5th and 6th dimensions, maybe mostly 6D. This is an image of a Syrian star being that I have drawn in a manner similar to Syrian images found online. These star beings are from Sirius, the brightest star in our planet's night sky. I have read that this star race is characterized by joy, loving kindness, and fierce protectiveness of emerging star races, for the all, through free will. That makes sense to me as they are felt to be the ancestors of, and colonizers of my much beloved Hathors of the planet Venus in our solar system. From several visits to me by a delegation of Hathors during Solar Cycle 24, it is clear that they share with their Syrian forebears these wonderful qualities. Arcturian Star Being, 6th and 7th Dimensions Arcturian Star Beings are healers and confer upon light workers the ascension gift of helping to heal planet Earth and Earth's beings, including humankind, during the ascension process. I am greatly honored to have an Arcturian star being as a member of my ascension team. Andromedan star being, 9th to 10th dimensions? Although my knowledge of my Andromedan ascension team member is intuitive rather than channeled, I feel that this member of my ascension team may proffer me these ascension gifts, a thirst for exploration, not only of planet Earth, but also of the universe, and of all spatial and temporal realities therein, the hope to help in the healing and upliftment of Earth and all her children, and an avid interest in astrogeophysics, in the mastery of time and space. Baptismal Seraph, 8th to 13th Dimensions I feel, maybe higher. When a child is baptized as a Christian, a sylph, a type of nature spirit known as an elemental of the air, attaches itself to the child, in the area of the child's heart, 
and in the form of a fiery white cross. Under special conditions, that sylph can, all in a flash, be transformed to a seraph, which is one kind of angel. When the time comes for the transformation of the sylph to its adult seraph form, the young seraph bursts forth in power and light and splendor from the egg or chrysalis dwelt in by its softly sleeping juvenile form. Seraphs are members of the glorious clan of seraphim of the angelic realm. In the many years after a baptismal sylph awakens to its seraph nature, the seraph grows in size, splendor, and power in upwelling and outpouring exaltation in God's holy nature, for some while, perhaps months, or years, the baptismal seraph hovers protectively near its baptismal person. As the young baptismal seraph grows in power and splendor before the Lord, its baptismal person's heart also blossoms into a brilliant orb that glows and spins, and at times, bursts forth radiantly in waves of healing light for earth and her beings, in time, after the transformation from its juvenile sleeping form in the heart of a person it has joined during the sacrament of baptism, the baptismal seraph grows to such strength and glory in God's wisdom and grace that it scarcely can fit into a building of normal size. Pausing briefly to bid its human friend farewell. It spreads its wings and springs forth joyfully to explore the wonders of God's creation. But if the baptismal person calls it, no matter how far away the baptismal seraph may be, it will all in a trice return to its charge, filling the space in which that person stands with a softly glowing, many-colored, ever-changing effulgence. Elohim, 8th through 72nd Dimension here is a composite drawing of Mintaka star system, home of the Elohim. I recall some time I spent, between incarnations, learning whatever an earthly soul may from the great angelic presence is known as the Elohim. This soul memory has led me to a feeling that the Elohim are among the most august members of my ascension team. Elohim are said to exist in the 8th through the 72nd dimension. The 13th through the 72nd dimensions are said to be without form, or unformed. The 8th through the 12th dimensions, although comprising very refined energy, are nevertheless considered to be formed dimensions. The possibilities for a human being such as I to interface with the Elohim thus can be seen to exist in the formed interface between the least dense dimensions of the arisen human and the most dense dimensions in which the Elohim dwell. This drawing shows how these star beings bless humankind on earth. Mantaka is a binary star system comprising a group of three stars and another group of two stars, that is five stars in all. When I made the drawing I was reminded of this stanza in a poem I wrote in my early teens, Five Small Star Child Slid Down Whispering stole to the sand, receded, and came again. On silent calling flood, startling tree tops, at the time when I wrote the poem I thought the stanza was to do with my siblings and me, as there were five of us all together. Then when I did the drawing you now see I was reminded of the five stars in Mintaka, and the blessings borne by the Elohim from Mintaka to our grounded human forms here on planet Earth. Here is the entire poem I wrote in my childhood, Five Small Star Child. A poem by Alice B. Claggett. How have ye fared in the forest? Well now. The bear growled friend Lily, but near, and though birds stilled, clouds fell life wet to sorrow the stream, chilling the illusion of calm, forcing sparkle-edged objection in still waters. Well now. Sight failed. Recalled in time gentle windfall, leaving one star in slight nearness, soft bearing shadows. Well and now. Five small star child slid down whispering. Stole to the sand, receded, and came again. On silent calling flood, startling tree tops. Well and now. If only less fleet or more shy, so to farewell in soundlessness.
From my early work, published on February 15, 2019. Guardian Angel, 8th through 72nd Dimensions. My Guardian Angel is one of the most beloved and most beseeched of my Ascension team members. I feel that may be so because I have known about her him since early childhood, through education in my Christian faith. I say her him because, as many people know, angels have no gender. Yet they may appear to their human charges as male or as female. The first visit I remember by my guardian angel happened when I was but a wee tot. My angel, whose name was Michael, stood at the foot of my bed in the aspect of a young man. He seemed quite grown up to me, and quite capable of looking out for my interests in the world, although today I would say my angel then appeared to be in his early teens. I felt I had known him forever, since before time began, and undone through many ages and many past life experiences. Clearly, my Christian friends might take exception to this. But who can argue with an angel sent especially by God to guard me and protect me through the perils and throes of earthly existence? In the image you see before you, the guardian angel has a feminine aspect. That is an oft encountered way of portraying these patient ethereal friends of our childhood, of our majority, and of our increasing age. Our guardian angels have the patience of a mother, and are ever watchful wards against the minions of the dark. Woman of Lyra, a member of the Lyran Collective, 12th Dimension. Without the creative efforts of my Ascension team members of Lyra, the Lion Beings of Lyra, whose aspect is masculine, and the women of Lyra, I would not be here on earth at all, so I am very grateful that there is a woman of Lyra on my ascension team. The drawing before you is of a woman of Lyra. These are beings full of light and grace, who are said to weave the dreamtime strands of DNA that create the many beings of the universe. If that be so, then the women of Lyra must have helped out the Martian bacterial colonists of the human colon, as these are experts in re-engineering the species of the planets they inhabit through manipulation of DNA. I feel it might be accurate to say that the women of Lyra work with the etheric DNA of the beings of the universe, and that beings such as our commensal Martians work more with physical and astral DNA, so there is a difference there. In June 2021 I had a conversation with my Martians, who said that the women of Lyra converse as well with the Jupiterians of our solar system. It may be, in so doing, that they help to keep a symbiotic balance amongst the Jupiterians of Earth in the plants, animals and minerals of our planet. Lion Being, a member of the Lyran Collective, 12th Dimension this drawing is of one of the lion people of Lyra. They are fearless, like the American Sikhs with whom I studied during the 1980s. As the Sikhs say in the Mool Mantra, one of the qualities of the arisen human, the self-actuated human, is near bow, which means to be fearless. It was during those days that I took on, insofar as I was able, the qualities of my Lyran Lion Ascension team member. The women of Lyra and the Lion people of Lyra, I feel, may be two members of the Lyran collective of star beings, just as the Sekhmet Hathors and the Blue Avian star beings, I feel, are members of the Ra group, which is the Venusian collective of star beings. That is all for now, dear ones. I wish you all the best with your channeling of light, love, and joy from our star brothers and sisters. God bless you all. And keep you safe. And be with you. Through all your days. In love, light and joy. Alice B. Claggett. I am of the stars. June 13, 2022. CC by SA 4.0.